A lot of people stop me and say that, Vineet, has the leadership model of today become obsolete? And my answer is that the answer is a big yes. And the reason I say it is I met a friend of mine uh, about 25 years after we graduated from school. And I looked at him and saying, oh God, you've aged. And little did I recognize that I too would have aged, but my aging has been gradual because I have been seeing it uh, in the mirror every day, whereas there was a sudden impact of seeing my friend age after 25 years. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because leadership models, uh, which were discovered hundreds of years ago, uh, have become obsolete year by year, day by day, and we have not noticed their irrelevance. And there is a very strong need today for us to rediscover a new leadership model for the new paradigm in which we live today. Why am I saying that? There are three or four mega trends which we should be aware of. The first is that the manufacturing industry, which was the cornerstone of industrial revolution, has given way to services industry. Now, what's so unique about the services industry? What is unique about services industry is where the value gets created. In the manufacturing industry, the value was being created uh, in the R&D or in the manufacturing units far away from the customers. In the services industry, the value zone is actually in the interface of the customers and the, and the company or the employees of the company. So as the value zone has moved closer to the customers, the question is, is the leadership model, the management model still relevant, which was more command and control oriented and very relevant for armies and manufacturing industries? The second change which has happened is that the Generation Y uh, has now, which is 50% of the worldwide population, is there in all organizations. Now, what is so unique about Generation Y? I think two things of relevance. Number one, their ability to do multitasking. They can do eight tasks simultaneously. Number two, they're, because of the Facebook and those, all the social networking technologies we have, uh, their view towards more collaborative work style, more open and transparent work style. And when these people, uh, structured, unstructured thinking come into our workplace, uh, they are actually you know, square pegs in round holes because the organization is more command and control oriented. So the day one they come, we say welcome to our organization and you know you're going to not collaborate but compete with each other because we have this uh, bell curve in which you will be the top 10%, you'll be the balance 30%. And therefore, there is a sense of obsolescence to the business model and the leadership model we have for the generation Y coming in. The third, I think, is a very critical aspect of change is the customers worldwide are looking for value for money. What does that mean? The value centricity in proposition is increasing. And therefore, away from quality of goods, which is taken for granted, more and more value is being discovered. So if you combine that with the fact that value is being created in the interface of customers and the company and its employees, and the fact that the customers are more and more focused on value, you start asking the question, if the value is being created away from the organization and the employees are creating the value, then what leadership model is, is going to be relevant for us? So I believe that because of these three or four mega trends, the leadership model has slowly aged. It is looking old. It is not that relevant for today as it was for yesterday. And I think there is a big yes that we need to relook at it very, very closely. So now that we have reflected that the leadership model of today needs an alternate thinking, what possibly could be an alternate thinking? And I would say that the command and control structure, uh, the pyramid structure with uh, one at the top, uh, some uh, in the middle and many at the bottom, uh, is a good structure from control's point of view, from uh, uh, you know, compliance point of view, governance point of view. So there is nothing we should do to disturb it. However, I would say that we should form what I call a star organization. Star organization is add an inverted pyramid 
on top of the erect pyramid and therefore it forms a star. What is this inverted pyramid? I think the inverted pyramid is you know a question about uh, a few questions we need to ask before we come to the inverted pyramid. The first question is what is the core business uh, of a company, of a corporation? And we just concluded that the core business of the corporation is to create value uh, and maximize value in the interface of the customers and the company. So who is, uh, who are the people uh, in that interface uh, from the organization side? Obviously it is the employees. So therefore the conclusion is that it is the employees in the interface of the customers and the company which are creating the value. Once that is understood, then we need to ask ourselves as to, hence, what business should be the management of the company be? And it is quite apparent that it should be in the business of enabling, enthusing, encouraging, the creation of the vow, the creation of the value in the value zone. And that should define what the management should do. So if we understand that the value is being created at the bottom of the pyramid, which is what I call at the top of the vow zone or the value zone, and the management is actually at the bottom of the pyramid, enabling, enthusing, creating that value zone. That is what we create, what I call an inverted pyramid, which is called the value pyramid. So if you imagine a leadership style or imagine an organization structure, which has a command and control from control and governance perspective existing, at the same time you recreate a new inverted pyramid, which is more focused on value, and you have the management accountable for value to the employees in the value zone and the employees accountable to the management for control and governance, you create what I call a collaborative enterprise. Uh, 